Hi, in this video we'll be discussing custom fields and custom joins. Custom fields and joins are used to extend a product with site-specific business logic. For the first example, I'll use this contacts table from AdventureWorks. It has a column called name and if we preview the data and have a look at the SQL, you can see that it's putting the first name and then the last name. I'd like to customize this and create a new column where the last name is at the beginning followed by the first name. To do this, come to the selection criteria and right click and come down to customize and select add field. Then we have this UI where we can define the attributes of the custom field and the first one is the code. This will be the unique code that will follow the, the column. You can customize the SQL later on as long as you don't change the code. I'm going to change the description to be last comma first name and then I'm going to set the data type. It's going to be a string and then we come down to the actual SQL column itself. You can see here that it has a table alias. Every column that you add into a custom field will require a table alias. So you could have a, a case statement with some very long logic as long as you prefix the columns with the table alias. I've prepared a SQL snippet and you can see I have the table alias, the last name and then I'm putting a comma space first name. If I was to press OK at this point, it would pick up that I haven't currently set the SQL data type. So I'll just come back in here and that will be a char. And let's press OK. I get this message just to tell me to refresh the table because there's now a new custom field. You can see the custom field has come up as a blue field. Let's add this to the start and preview the data. You can see now the names are reversed to what they were before. This is quite helpful when you want to produce a field that has a particular sort order or if in the case of numbers maybe debit minus credit. That sort of logic. If a custom field was deleted after a report was created, for example like this, and we delete the field, if we were to run the report we would then see these sorts of messages where the custom fields code has been removed. Next I'd like to go on to custom joins. For this example I'm using the sales order header table out of AdventureWorks. Here we have the territory in which the sales are made and then the total. And if I preview this result you can see here's the countries and here are the total amounts. But if I don't have transactions for a particular region for a particular period then that country will drop out of the list. For that reason I'd like to start at the territory table and then join to the sales order header table. But you can see that the territory table doesn't have a join to sales header. What I'll do is right click and select add join. This time the screen is different because we're defining a join. First of all, let's go to the join to table and from the button select the target table. I can use the find to enter sales order header and the next item is the description of the join. If you leave this with join table description, it will put in the description of the table that you're joining to without changing this. The next important section is the SQL join syntax. So let's use the wizard to build up our join. You can see here we have sales territory and sales order header. So I'd like to join the territory ID to the territory ID on the other side. You can see that the join has been built up for us. We can of course custom edit this join but the criteria that it's built up for us is fine. 
select OK. And now you can see, just as before, we have a blue entry, but this time it's adjoined to the sales order table. So now I can open it up and start pulling out the figures. And just as before, we have the total for the sales, but this time there won't be any gaps in the territories. Let's repeat this exercise, but now using a different system called SAP Business One. Here you can see I have the chart of accounts and the chart of accounts doesn't have a join back to the GL transactions table. Of course I could start a report on the GL transactions but then if I don't have a transaction posted for a particular period the account might appear. So I'd like to add a join from this table to the GL transactions table. Just as we did before we're going to add a join and we select the target table which is GL transactions and down in the join criteria we can now start selecting the columns. Now in this case the columns are quite complicated so I'd like to just type in my own join criteria. You can see I've pasted in a join and we have the join alias which is the table that we're joining to and the table alias is the parent table that we're joining from. It's also possible to add further joins that come before the final join. Press OK here and you can see now we have a join to the transactions and we can start pulling out figures from that table as well. Let's have a look at deployment. To edit the join. There are two buttons at the bottom, export and import. So you can export all the custom joins and fields for a particular product to a file and then import them at a different location. It's also possible to report over the custom fields and joins that exist on a particular product. So if I come into the system product, you can see here under system we have data models and there are some tables called custom tables, fields and joins. So if I was to select fields and joins, you can see that I can report on all the custom fields and joins created for a particular system. As you can see, custom joins and fields are quite powerful and allow you to customize the site. If a new version of a data model is deployed, the custom fields and joins which are held in the Sharpalite database are merged with the new version, so nothing is lost. This has been a brief overview of custom fields and joins.